action. Welcome to the Learning Lab. My name is Roman Garcia. This is Volume 5. Today what we're going to be discussing is osteoarthritis of the knee. And what I'm going to be showing is uh, relatively simple. I'm going to be describing a new paradigm for osteoarthritis. Because currently, the, um, the thinking of uh, osteoarthritis and how it starts, in my opinion, is a little bit archaic. And we need new paradigms to develop new systems. So what I'm going to show you today is where I believe osteoarthritis begins in the knee joint. In order to treat conditions and diseases in the medical industry, the first thing that needs to be done is to understand the condition itself. And I believe that our understanding of osteoarthritis is severely lacking in the medical community. So what I'm going to show you is different ways using different systems to demonstrate how osteoarthritis starts. And by understanding osteoarthritis better, we'll be able to develop better treatments. So if you allow me, I'm going to start off with an experiment that I did not too long ago so you can appreciate the biology of osteoarthritis. So if you allow me, follow me to this section right over here. These, these are chicken bones. What I did is I froze three of them, which are these, and I let three of them desiccate or dry out in the environment. I let them dry for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. These were frozen. Later, I took these out of the refrigerator or the freezer and I allowed them to thaw. So basically what we have here is we have models of what a, a normal tissue represents and what an osteoarthritic tissue represents. And what I did is I used dye and I injected it into an area of the bone that's called the subchondral bone, which is where I believe that osteoarthritis develops and where it begins. It doesn't begin at the cartilage. So let me demonstrate what I did and as I, as, as I go along, you'll understand the biology of osteoarthritis better. Now again, this is a normal joint. This represents a normal joint, nice and hydrated. Nutrients are flowing through the bone and into the surface itself or the cartilage. This is a, this is a model of an of osteoarthritic joint. Now, observe what happened. I took the dye and I injected it right into this space right here. This space right here is called the subchondral bone. This is a weight-bearing bone. This is the subchondral bone. So what I did is I took dye and I injected it into this space right here. Now, mind you, this is a representation of a normal joint, nice and hydrated, where you got nutrients flowing through the bone tissue and onto the surface. Now look at this, what happened that's interesting. As I injected the dye into this area right over here, the dye actually diffused or penetrated into the joint surface. You can see the staining on the surface itself. So as I injected the dye, it penetrated or diffused through the bone and onto the surface. In essence, feeding or bringing fluids to the joint surface, which is what you would expect in a normal joint. Now, I did it to three bones. These were, these were well hydrated, normal representative of a knee joint. Again, you see the staining on the surface here. I injected the dye into the subchondral region and look what happened. It diffused right onto the surface. It penetrated fluidly. Again, you see it here. Penet I injected it right into the subchondral space right here and it penetrated right onto the joint surface. This is what you would expect in a normal joint. Fluid is flowing through it and onto the surface and feeding, bringing nutrients to the cartilage itself. Now look at on this model here that represents osteoarthritis. This bone was desiccated, as you would see in a normal human or, an, or a joint, a human joint that's under arthritic stress. The bone desiccates. Now look at this, what happened. I injected the dye into the subchondral space just like I did this, but these, but look what happened. The, the dye did not penetrate onto the surface. The surface stayed clean. Again, I did it to this bone. And again, you see it over here. I injected it right into the subchondral space. Look, or look what did not happen. The, the dye did not penetrate onto the surface. 
you got a little bit of staining on this one. There mu in this case, there must have been a little spot where there was some hydration, so you did get some penetration into the surface. But overall, on these bones that were dry, that is representative of an osteoarthritic human knee joint, the dye did not penetrate onto the surface, as did these that are representative of a normal hydrated knee joint. So hydration is key to osteoarthritis. A normal joint will have a hydra hydrated biology, so fluids flow through it, just like you see here. This is the osteoarthritic case. No staining whatsoever. You got a little bit of staining here, but basically the, the, the staining, the ink, did not penetrate onto the surface. Now, what I'm going to do now, if you allow me, let's go over here. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you now where that subchondral space is in a human joint. So I'm going to bring my model over, Anna, so I can show you exactly where that subchondral space and where it is that osteoarthritis begins in a, in a human knee joint. Anna, please come right in here. You're going to lay face up, your head over here. Now, what I'm going to demonstrate with Anna is that subchondral space. Now, this, I'm going to mark it so you see and you know where it is. This is a subchondral space. It's this space right here, right underneath the joint line. This is the joint line. This is where the cartilage is, right here. This is the joint line. The cartilage is right here. Now, the subchondral space is this space right here. All trauma, cumulative or single event, will traumatize this bone. This is where the nutrients flow through into the cartilage, feeding the cartilage. The diffusion occurs right through here. This is the space that I injected on those chicken bones. And as you saw, the desiccated bone, there was no fluid penetrating onto the surface. The bones that were better hydrated, the ink, the staining penetrated and, and it stained the actual joint surface itself. So this right here is the critical space in, in the knee joint. This is where the osteoarthritis starts. The, the normal idea or the common idea nowadays out in the medical domain and in the public is that the arthritis starts at the joint space line. It does not. It starts here at the subchondral space. This is the vulnerable area in the knee joint. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you on x-rays that subchondral space. And I'm going to take you basically through a progression of osteoarthritis. I'm going to start with a normal joint and then to a moderately involved joint and then to a very involved joint. And I'll show you the changes as they occur on the x-ray. So if you allow me, if you come over here, let me show you the, a normal joint. I had the pleasure of examining this joint myself. All the biometrics on this joint were completely normal. Now observe how it looks on an x-ray. This is the subchondral space right here. This is where the arthritis is. This is where it starts. It's right here at this junction right here. This space right here. This is a subchondral space. Look at this joint, how it looks on an x-ray. You can see almost right through it. You see right through it because it has, it's well hydrated. The biology of this joint is very healthy, so you'll, the, the energy, the x-ray energy goes right through it and, it, and it looks almost transparent. This is a very healthy joint on x-rays, and when I examined it biomechanically, it was a very healthy joint. There, there is no arthritis whatsoever in this joint right here. Now, let me show you another picture, another view. Now, under the current terms and the current ideas that exist out in the medical domain and in the public domain, if a physician would examine this joint, they would qualify this joint as healthy. Now, using the paradigm that I'm trying to establish in the way to look at osteoarthritis, understand it, 
it, it's, you'll see the subtle formation of arthritis in this joint. Now, observe. It's not as translucent as the first image that I showed you. Look how white it looks. This is the subchondral space. Look how white it looks. Look how white it looks. It's very white. This one's slightly more wider. This is the left, this is the right. This one's slightly more wider. It's white versus this one. But they both show a, a strong white pigment to the bone texture. What this tells us is that this subchondral space is beginning to desiccate. Now, observe the joint space width. Anybody or any physician under the current ideology that exists in the public, when they look at this x-rays, they, they will focus in on this space right here, and they will qualify this as a normal knee joint with, go, with healthy joint space width, so they would, not, they would not label this picture here as arthritic. But, using the paradigm that I'm trying to establish, having to do with desiccation, this subchondral space is already starting to show degenerative changes. Now, I'll show you a sign of degeneration. These pictures right now that I'm going to show you. This is a view. This is a, this is a view of, the, of this, this film right here. It's the same knee joint. This is the left. Now, the desiccation is already starting to produce inflammation. And how do I know that? Because of this. This is, this is a view of the knee in a flex position. It's bent and it's taken from the side. This is the femur bone and then this is the bottom bone. This is the tibial bone. Obse this is the back of the knee. This is the front of the knee. This is the kneecap. Observe this mineralization right here. This joint has been in an inflammatory state already for a while and it's collected fluid in the back space over here. With time, that fluid actually mineralizes and you see this, 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 this bony formation right here. This tells me that this joint has been in an inflammatory state. This is the left and this is the right. Again. Again, the knee, the knee is in a bent position. And again, this is the right. Again, you see the mineralization right over here. This knee has been under duress. Though, if they were to label or evaluate this joint in, with the current terminology and the current ideology that exists, this joint would be labeled as a healthy joint because of this expanded joint space width. There's a lot of cartilage here. The cartilage is not affected yet, but the subchondral space is starting to desiccate. So using the paradigm that I'm recommending, any physician who would see this joint would immediately start implementing anti-arthritic treatments on this case because of this subchondral desiccation. Now, I'm going to show you now a knee with full-blown arthritis in it is very marked, very remarkable. This is the right, this is the left. Again, look at the whiteness of this bone. This bone is completely desiccated. This subchondral joint space right here is not transmitting any nutrients. There's no diffusion of nutrients. There's no biological flow flowing through this space anymore. The cartilage has been devoid of all nutrients, so it's basically it's basically degenerative away. It's, de it's a degenerative joint completely. This is the right, this is the left. You see that the left has, is not as white as the white. This subchondral space is still transmitting nutrients through the subchondral space and into the cartilage. This cartilage is still receiving a, 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 a little bit of nutrients through it. Eventually, if nothing is done, it will look as the right does. But you can see the difference in the subchondral space. And accordingly, you'll see, and you see the difference in the cartilage volume. This subchondral region right over here, very desiccated. There's no biological flow. There's no energy flowing through this subchondral space. The cartilage is not receiving nutrients, and it basically just, it wasted away. You still have some joint space with here, because this subchondral space is healthier. Now, now what does all this mean? I think it's simple. 
we, we've been relying on this old terminology, on this old ideology of what osteoarthritis is. It has not been working too well. We need to understand osteoarthritis better. And we need to start by understanding how it starts, where it starts, and the biology behind it. And be able to identify it sooner than what we are thus far. Only then can we implement strategies and interventions that will truly be effective. This, in, in future volumes, I will be demonstrating strategies that you can use to protect the subchondral space. It's vital that we develop new paradigms to develop these new treatments, new interventions. But first we need to understand it. And I believe that what I am saying is the biology of the osteoarthritis. The subchondral space is the critical point that needs to be evaluated on every joint examination, on every knee joint examination. Again, for anybody that's seen, that's seen this video, I want to thank you for your, your support of our videos. I will be, we will be producing more videos as we go along, and I will be starting to demonstrate interventions that you can implement to protect your joints better. Thank you for watching this video.